Hi everyone, welcome back. We are continuing our nine day process for goddess guru Purnima. If you're just tuning into this video for the first time, check out the last few videos that explain the process and get you started. So ideally, starting from day one, working your way through the nine day process, even if you don't do it consecutively, you know, each day in a row, that's okay. Just start the process from the beginning and work your way through. We are working up to the day of Guru Purnima, Goddess Purnima on July 21st, which is a full moon, where we will be engaging in a larger co-creative manifestation process. We will be setting intentions and seeding what you want to create in your life. And so in these days leading up to that day, we're working with different aspects of consciousness. We're working in ceremony and meditation to get ourselves in the zone, to get ourselves ready, to get ourselves fully aligned, to be able to make this ask, to be able to receive, to be able to, to really work with the intelligence of the universe in the most powerful co-creative way that we can. So today we're focused on the east direction and we're going to be working with the keeper of the upper world we're going to do a journey meditation to the upper world to connect with destiny, to connect with the future. And this is one of my favorite processes. So, so I'm excited to get started with you. And we'll just begin by coming into sacred space together and I'll, I'll do our opening mantras to allow us to be here together fully protected in this container, holding the intentions for the most miraculous, beautiful, loving transformation that's possible for us all. So just connecting with your breath, like we've done on the previous days, allowing your in-breath to lengthen a bit. Allowing your exhale to lengthen. Making your exhale just a little longer than your inhale. Allowing the body and the nervous system to calm, to rest. using that practice of stillness and peace yesterday. To help us start today's practice in a more peaceful, present, grounded state. Oh. Sakshat Pada Brahman Tasma Esri Guru Dei Nanamaha Om Sukam Padadaram Vishnu Sashivanam Chatu Bhujam Pasaranam Vyaye Sava Vidmopashanti Om Bhubhu Vasudaha Tat Savitu Vaenyam Bhargo Devasya Dimahi Diyo Yaunaha Prachodaya Om Shanti 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 hmm. All right. 
So turning to the east direction, acknowledging the east direction and asking that the east direction be present with us today, knowing that as we move into the east direction, we are moving into the place of the rising sun, allowing our solar consciousness to rise, allowing us to have an experience of oneness, an experience of unity, an experience of transcendence, allowing us to fully arrive at the place of destiny, knowing that as we navigate our way from the south to the west to the north, we are aligning more fully, completely with who we are meant to be. As we let go, as we face our fears, as we, as we learn more about our soul and what our soul wants to do in this life, what gifts our soul is carrying, what sort of support we're receiving from the realm of spirit, we can then take all of that and arrive in the east direction where we are then reborn where we are then experiencing a beautiful rejuvenation and, and a rebirth of ourselves. So we can experience that on a small scale in the way we are this week or on a much grander scale in life as we move through this sort of cyclic process. So we ask that the East direction now be with us, guiding us, in embodying our solar consciousness, our consciousness of light, our consciousness of the light and love of source. Asking that in whatever way is right for us, for our work in this world, that we be reborn as our true selves, as the souls who we were meant to be when we came to this world. Asking that the East direction support us in effortlessly navigating this path of destiny, embodying our destiny in graceful ways and beautiful ways and powerful ways, asking that our ability to be reborn over and over and over again, asking that that contribute to beautiful transformation around us, knowing that the ultimate goal is for us to return to love, to experience harmony, to love it all, and to co-create in beauty. And so we ask for the East Direction's help with that today. And we call on the keeper of the upper world, knowing that we have all of our other allies with us from the previous days, knowing that we are anchored deeply to Mother Earth's crystalline core, knowing that we are already connected to Mother Source consciousness, we call on the keeper of the upper world, this final aspect of Father Consciousness, to help us experience, know, and embody our highest destiny. So we'll now do a journey to the upper world where we'll meet with this aspect of Father Consciousness, the Keeper of the Upper World, and we'll ask to be shown, we'll ask to be shown what is for us the highest path, the highest potential, the highest potential that is available for you right now, knowing that there's all sorts of potentials that exist for our lives, for our path forward, and we're asking for the best. We're asking for the highest. We're asking for the one that is most appropriate for you right now. So finding a place where you can just lay back, be completely still, completely relaxed. We'll begin our journey similarly to the one we did to the lower world, finding the world tree, but this time we'll be going up 
instead of down. And we'll pass through a few different realms before we get to the upper world. This is a, a meditation and a journey that is based on journeys that were guided by Peruvian shamans that taught uh, or who taught Alberto Violdo how to guide this journey. So I've learned this from Albert, Alberto Violdo and in various ways um, made it mine over time as I've been as I've been using it. So we'll pass through the rock people realm, the plant people realm, the realm of animals, the animal kingdom realm, the realm of humans, whales, and dolphins, and then we'll reach the upper world. So these are kind of like the bardo realms, like realms of consciousness that we're going to pass through as we, we find our way up. And we'll go fast. We're not going to pause and, and linger. So finding that place of stillness again, getting ready to journey. Taking a deep breath in, fully releasing out. One more time. And releasing. And again, returning to that slow, gentle breathing that allows your inhale to lengthen your exhale to lengthen and just following the slow, gentle, rhythmic breathing as we begin to journey. And as you connect with your breath, closing your eyes, imagine your feet planted firmly on the earth, feeling her beneath you standing in a field, seeing yourself standing in front of a beautiful majestic tree, feeling the grass beneath your feet, the full moon overhead, the full moon illuminating your path forward to this tree. And you step one foot in front of the other, moving effortlessly towards this tree. And as you approach this tree, you set the intention to journey to the upper world, to meet with the keeper of the upper world, to see a future possibility, to see a possibility for your destiny that you may anchor on today. And asking the tree if you may enter and journey to the upper world, the tree now says yes, but you must leave behind what is heavy so you exit your body, and allow your consciousness to step into this tree now, feeling a beautiful stream of light flowing through the trunk of this tree. And you begin to notice this stream of light now moving you up, up, up through the trunk of the tree, up, up, up into the branches, feeling this beautiful shimmering light guiding you effortlessly up, 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 up reaching higher and higher and higher into the uppermost branches and now reaching the very tip of the highest branch and noticing a silver and gold cord emitting from this branch you now grab onto the silver and gold cord and it helps you go higher you now go higher and higher seeing the tree below you as you reach higher into earth's atmosphere reaching the highest points of Earth's atmosphere as you begin to exit, staying connected to this golden and silver cord, going higher, higher, entering into the rock people realm, higher and higher, passing through the rock realm and into the plant realm, just noticing what you perceive, if you perceive anything, and continuing to go higher now, continuing up to the animal kingdom realm, passing through the animal kingdom realm and up into the realm of humans, whales, and dolphins. And quickly now, exiting the realm of humans, whales, and dolphins and arriving at a set of gates. And just beyond these gates, you see the keeper of the upper world walking towards you and the gate opens and the keeper of the upper world beckons you inside and you begin to follow. 
and you begin to see below you a floor of clouds, almost solid but not quite as you step effortlessly across the clouds following the keeper of the upper world. And the keeper of the upper world is guiding you to a temple. You see it in front of you, a beautiful, crystalline, gorgeous temple of light. And in this temple, you will see a future potential, a future timeline, a future possibility for your life. And the keeper of the upper world continues <clears throat> to guide you <clears throat> into this temple, into one of its innermost chambers. And the keeper of the upper world guides you to the door of this chamber. And as you stand in front of the door, you set the intention again, this time with the keeper of the upper world present, that as you pass through this door, you'll see it, you'll perceive it, you'll see a version of yourself, a version of your future that is possible for you. And the keeper of the upper world now counts to three and on the count of three you enter one two three you now enter and see it you may know it you may see it visually you may hear something either way is just perfect Knowing that the keeper of the upper world is with you, you may ask any questions you have about this future, about this potential. And if this future, this potential timeline is one you would like to choose, you may choose it now and ask that the keeper of the upper world support you in guiding you towards this future. And you may ask if there's anything you need to do, are there any actions you need to take? and receiving the answer from the keeper of the upper world, setting the intention for any additional actions, things you must know or do on this path for that to be made known in the right time. Trusting in the keeper of the upper world to guide perfect divine timing And once you have chosen this potential timeline, or if this wasn't right for you and you choose to come back at a different date, you now exit that chamber and the keeper of the upper world guides you back to the entrance of the temple. And at the entrance of the temple, you see ancestors who are waiting to meet you, waiting to give you love and to say hello and to cheer you on, on your journey. And as you exit this temple, hugging and loving on your ancestors, receiving whatever messages, guidance they have for you now. You look around and you see the path back to the gates of the upper world lined with hundreds and hundreds of souls, spirits, loved ones from this life and other lives, souls who have loved you dearly, souls who have been there for you, souls who are part of your team, 
souls who are cheering you on in your work, your life, your embodiment of your destiny here on earth. And as you walk down this path, you lovingly connect with, acknowledge and appreciate all of these souls who have shown up in celebration today of you. And just fully receiving this celebration, fully receiving this gorgeous showing of support from your team and spirit, allowing this send off from the realm of spirit to support you in coming back to the middle world. You now exit the gates, bowing to the keeper of the upper world, thanking the keeper of the upper world for the opportunity to connect, to see a different potential, to align with a higher future for yourself, to commune with your loved ones in spirit, and you begin to take your leave, attaching back to those golden and silver cords, now descending, going down, down quickly through the human whale dolphin realm, down quickly through the animal kingdom, down quickly through the plant realm, down, down, down through the rock people realm, down, seeing the very edge of Earth's atmosphere continuing down, holding on to the silver and golden cord, going down, 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 entering Earth's atmosphere, seeing the very tip of the world tree, the tip of its branches, and beginning to enter the highest branch, going down, 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 now held by the world tree, anchored to earth, going down, 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 down through its branches, down into its trunk, down, down, down. Now as you rest in its trunk, allowing the light that flows through this tree to wash away any energy that is not yours to carry, stepping out of the tree and back into your body, coming back into this day and time, waking up, <laughs> coming back, bringing some movement into your body, wiggling your toes, wiggling your fingers. <sighs> Welcome back to earth. <laughs> And maybe taking a moment to get your journal and and just journal about whatever was present for you, what you experienced. I'm going to do just a little too. So just taking a moment to jot down any notes that you want to remember from this experience, what it felt like going up, what it felt like meeting the keeper of the upper world, how you saw the keeper of the upper world. If you saw anything, sometimes these aren't super visual journeys and that's okay. You're still going to get the benefit of it. Trust me, <laughs> anytime I've done them and they're not visual, even when I lead them, when I'm leading them with you, I don't um, perceive a lot for myself because I'm leading it for you. I'm still seeing where we're going, but I'm not having my own personal experience as much, um, but it always activates what needs to activate in my system and my consciousness. So just trust that that's going to happen no matter what. And so even if you didn't have a super visual experience, maybe just taking a few moments to journal about how you felt prior, during, after. If you did have a visual experience, what did you see? What was that future version of you doing? How was it being? How was it operating? When we met, our, our ancestors and all the people who showed up at the end, that was not planned, by the way. That was awesome. That was totally spontaneous that that just happened. That was such a fun, uh, fun thing. I just wrote ancestor parade. <laughs> I love it. Um, how did that feel? Who did you see?
I don't know about you, but anytime I go to the upper world, anytime I do a very intentional journey like that, I always come back feeling more energized, feeling more like myself. And that just continues to kind of unfold over, you know, the days ahead after I've done a journey like that. So, so thank you for doing that with me. And just know that, again, no matter what you perceived, what we've done there is we've asked the keeper of the upper world to guide us to our highest potential. So even if we didn't have a super visual experience, those wheels are in motion. <laughs> and, and what we can now expect is that spirit is going to guide us. And we're, we're going to ask again that the keeper of the middle world support the work we've done in the upper world and the work we've done in the lower world, bringing that into physical reality in the most peaceful, benevolent, easeful ways possible. Just allowing our illusions of physical reality to shift and change, allowing us to become clear on any actions we need to take to allow us to move towards our highest future or a more beautiful timeline, asking that the right things occur, asking that the keeper of the middle world support the synchronicity and divine flow that brings that highest destiny to pass. So we can ask these three aspects of consciousness to also work together to bring harmony. And when we're actively working with the keeper of the lower world, the keeper of the upper world, and the keeper of the middle world, in these sorts of processes, we're bringing harmony. We are, we are allowing the right energies to come into physical reality to inform the, the physical manifestation of reality. <sighs> so just taking a moment to tune into some gratitude today. Anything, anything you can be grateful for. And just offering that gratitude. Saying thank you. Thank you to the universe, to mother, to goddess, to source. Knowing that as we go through these sorts of processes, we are positioning ourselves to be better vessels through which divine intelligence can work through which divine intelligence can move mountains, <laughs> through which divine intelligence can create. And that's what we want to do. We want to co-create. We want to be co-creators. We want to be the powerful creators of our life experience while we stay tuned in and we listen to where we're supposed to go and what we're supposed to do <laughs> and, and how we can be of service. And, and you know, one of the or I guess words of wisdom lessons that I've learned from one of our star family Bashar is to follow your passion. That is East direction work that is that is us tuning in to what feels exciting to us what feels fun what feels interesting what lights us up. Like truly, when you think about what lights you up, what gets you excited about life? Like if you got to choose, <laughs> if you got to choose how you were using your time, what you were doing, what are you passionate about? What would you want to do? And start to follow that. 
And that doesn't always mean, you know, quitting your job and doing something else like I did. <laughs> like that's a more extreme route, but, but we can start to move, you know, like in that direction in all of these small ways in our life. So, so, you know, one great barometer is, are we feeling excited and like we're having fun and like we're passionate about what we're doing or are we just doing it? Because it's something we've been doing or it's something we think think we should be doing or it's something others have kind of projected onto us as a way we should be living or spending our time or using our mind or whatever. Weigh those two, right? Like, where are you in that spectrum? And finding your way to fun and passion and excitement and and tuning into the things that really bring you joy, that's East Direction work. And when we can when we can really tune into that and anchor to that, that is going to allow the universe to guide us to that ideal destiny for ourselves. So, so that's some of your homework for today is to really stay tuned into that. And if you're, if you're not totally sure, that's cool too. It takes a while sometimes. <laughs> it's taken me a, a long time to figure out what I'm really passionate about. Journal about it, you know, and, and, and also think about uh, micro joys. This is something someone said uh, years ago that I just loved. Micro joys, right? Like not everything about our life has to be this big, you know, dramatic, passionate, exciting, fun thing, right? We can have that sometimes, but what are the small ways? What are the small ways you can have fun? What are the small ways you can be more childlike? What are the small ways you can find joy? What are the micro joys in your life? And celebrate those too. So, you know, part of our East Direction work is also about celebrating life and and, and letting the universe know what we're excited about, letting the universe know what we want more of, letting the universe know like what is just awe-inspiring to us, letting the universe know that we see that thing that brought us joy, that we acknowledge it and that we're, we're, we're grateful for it. So, so anytime we can be leaning in that direction, that's East Direction work. And, and that is like the embodiment of solar consciousness in many ways, our ability to, to have fun and to stay lighthearted about life and, and to follow our passions, no matter what is um, being presented to us, right? So one of the things uh, I like to say these days, I, I said this to my mom recently was, I now plan for the best case scenario. Like that's just my expectation. I plan for the best case scenario, but I adapt. <laughs> I'll accept, I'll accept whatever the universe life presents to me. You know, I accept what is on this planet. I accept, I accept it all. And, and I expect the best case scenario. I hold intentions for the best case scenario because I know I know that this universe is so intelligent. This universe operates in genius ways when we just get out of our way. <laughs> when we stop blocking the universe, the universe will move mountains for us collectively, individually. We just have to allow it. So, so I allow the best case scenario to come to pass. I allow our collective highest destiny to come to pass in easy, benevolent, peaceful, harmonious ways. I expect that the intelligence of this universe that is so much greater than our personal intelligence, I expect that that intelligence has got it. I expect that that intelligence knows where we need to go and is supporting us in that fully. And any doubts, any worries, any fears that come up in that process on this journey for us all, well, that south and west direction work that we need to do. But we're going to tell those fears and those doubts that they don't have any place here anymore. Because we're, we're now moving into the east direction. And we're going to hold intentions 
for the highest and best outcomes. And we're going to ask that these three aspects of father consciousness that we've been working with, we're going to ask that the keeper of the lower world continue to help us excavate and clear old ideas, old paradigm beliefs, old ways of operating that are out of alignment with our truth, that are out of alignment with who we're really meant to be, that are out of alignment with our ability to experience heaven on earth. We're going to ask that the keeper of the middle world guide us through synchronicity and magical transformation and realignment that helps us bring our divine destiny from the keeper of the upper world to pass. And we're going to ask that grace guide perfect outcomes for all. <sighs> so with that, we'll wrap up our East Direction work today. And again, I encourage you to use the, the affirmations that you can find at the link below so that you continue to reinforce some of these ideas, some of these ways of operating and these ways of using our mind that also help us stay aligned with the highest possibilities, with, with the intelligence of this universe surprising us in beautiful, miraculous, gorgeous ways. And then tomorrow we'll start calling on the divine feminine intelligence of the universe. We'll start working with three goddess um, aspects of universal consciousness. <sighs> okay, I'll bring us into our closing with closing mantras. Om Shanti 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 Heaven on earth is embodied now. Heaven on earth is embodied now. Heaven on earth is embodied now. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget to do your mantras. <laughs> Bye for now.